Hello, um, this is a slightly overdue update to some of the thinking and work I've been doing around regenerative triangulation over the last year and a half. Um, it's two purposes, one as a general update and two as part of a course that I'm teaching at the moment. Um, so, regenerative triangulation. It kind of started as a reaction to the world generally. So I've been teaching futures and strategy and things for years and you know, the future is so hot right now. But literally, this is a Met Office Futures project from 2020. And you can see some of these outlandish temperatures. They said, hey, and by 2050, in 30 years' time, Britain might look like this in the summer. Literally, two years later, the weather forecast was that. So it is no surprise that people are going, um, we're really not sure what the future is going to look like. Every job has become a climate job. And so, to that end, as myself and uh, Scott Smith at Changes, we were working on a, a UNDP futures project, so building a future trend and signal system for them. And as a byproduct of that and seeing all of these signals come in from different teams around the world, it was like staring into the untempered schism for me. It was going, oh, uh, I need to do something. My job is now a climate job. This moment really brought it home to me, and I went, right, okay, so I need to start reading, acting, doing, thinking, just applying myself in different ways to this. And the thing that I first came across was this. Increasingly, people using the word regenerative where once they would have used sustainability, but putting the two together, we have to move beyond sustainability towards regenerative, beyond sustainability towards regenerative. And I'm like, that's interesting. I pay attention to metaphors and language quite a lot. By beyond, do we mean spatial? Is it sort of like the, this is a place and we have to get to that place before we get to this place? Or is it temporal? We have to do one first and then get to the other. Whichever way round you look at it, beyond implies through. You have to get to this before you get to that. And from the other reading I was doing, I was going, well, I'm not entirely sure that that holds up, that that's really what we have to do. So I posted it into another domain to think about, it, to, to get into fishing. And I thought, okay, so what do we mean when we say regenerative? Because sustainable for me was always something that people applied to, oh, we need to do more sustainable fishing. So I used this as a metaphor. Unsustainable, I think, is pretty clear to everyone. It's kind of like we're taking all the fish out of the, out of the water as quickly as we can with no real regard to tomorrow. Sustainability, sustainable fishing, was kind of like, well, I have to pay attention to my practice. What am I trying to do with sustainability? I'm sort of, well, I'm not going to take fish of this size or this uh, often or whatever else and so on because I want there to be more fish there tomorrow and the next day and so on. But then you realise that fishing is still getting harder somewhat and then you look around and go, oh, actually, it's not just my fishing that's doing that. And even it's not just fishing, it's the whole environment. It's all of the different things from water quality to agricultural impact to permit costs to some of the social things around local action and passion, access rights. All of these different things make a difference to fishing in a place. So you start to do what you can. Suddenly you realise that the world is bigger than just your thing and you're going, huh, okay, so it's not just the individual daily actions its sustainability has become, oh, it's just what I do on this day and so on, and I just have to sort my own house. No, it's kind of like, from what I have read and seen and understand, the definition of sustainability has drifted over time. So sustainable today is too much about the impact that our fishing is having. Let's just sort our own house out and do this. Whereas regenerative in the way that people are beginning to use it and describe it and apply it, and build hope into it is about, okay, what's the impact we're having on fishing? It's not just the impact our fishing is having, it's like, how do we act so that we can have impact on all of these different factors which build up to a bigger thing over time? I also started uh, pulling in, um, some of you might remember, uh, Taleb's anti-fragile argument. And I realised that, well, unsustainable, sustainable and regenerative are a bit like that anti-fragile argument of the opposite of fragile is not robust. Robust is just making the thing that you've got impervious to the changes going on at the time. Whereas anti-fragile, something that grows with all of those changes happening, is the true opposite of fragile. And I started thinking that, well, okay, so maybe 
the opposite of unsustainable is not sustainable. Because from a business model point of view, imagine this is your unsustainable business model. What you have is, okay, so my sustainability in this modern interpretation of it is just becoming sorting my own house out. I'm just going to pay attention to the business model that we operate within and just fix the bits we can. Just make these bits a little bit better so that we can continue operating. But, you know, whatever sort of like people accuse us of, we can say, no, no, look, we're trying. We're improving our business model. Whereas regenerative is thinking about, okay, maybe that's not the right shape. If we start from all of the constituent parts that we have and we're thinking bigger, we are thinking beyond our organisational boundaries, who are the people that we should and need and want to work with in order to address some of these bigger things? And how does that change the shape and structure and size of our organisation? Unsustainable to sustainable in this context feels like tinkering. It's like just operate within the inside of your boundaries. Whereas thinking regeneratively is like, no, 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 no. Let's take the constituent parts and transform them, but by working with others, with other people who can find ways of supplying, creating, making, involving a way to really address the problems for our business, for our sector, whatever it happens to be. Framing these choices for me then became an interesting thing. And this is where the regenerative triangulation thing came out. It's like, okay, so we have a rough orientation of we don't want to do tinkering, but we do want to do transforming. What might that look like? So I used these two models. So the first is the trajectory of environmentally responsible design by Bill Reed and Regenesis. So from about 2007. And then the second is Three Horizons from Bill Sharp. It's a double bill model, if you will. So from that first model, which I discovered through Daniel Christian Valls and Designing Regenerative Cultures, I thought, oh, well, let's borrow that axis. That's a nice way of thinking from conventional practice up to regenerative practice. So I then put that on the y-axis. So you've got, okay, so below the line is negative impact, above the line is positive impact. And that gets us back into this idea of the impact our action is having is below the line. So we're just concerned with the things that are working within our construct. And then above the line, it's the impact we're having on action. So thinking bigger, thinking sort of like, how do we truly transform the model? I then put the three horizons model to look at impact over time. So, okay, so in the first horizon, um, we think about, uh, you know, what are we doing today? What does that look like? What are the impacts that we're actually having if we do nothing and so on? The third horizon goes, what do we really want to become if we have an understanding of what regenerative could mean for our business, our sector, whatever it happens to be, what will that look like? And then in the second horizon, it's like, what do we really need to do to get there? So having these two axes defined like this allowed me to be unsustainable here at this point today. So we're thinking, oh, okay, so um, the past has happened. You start between negative and positive impacts. You, you have accrued everything you're going to accrue in the past, etc. Your actions from this point onwards matter. They count. So let's start at zero. Now, if you do nothing, if you don't change anything, you just accrue all of the negative impacts by the end of Horizon 1 that you were going to in the first place. So you go, oh, okay. That then is a line. It is the unsustainable trajectory. Whatever you do, you don't get worse. So then you say, okay, but we are doing things. So you can map out your current initiatives. And you put them on the map and say, okay, so what is it that we're doing where we are getting better in some regard? You probably draw out a line to sustainability. It says, look, we're improving. We're not as bad as we were, but we're maybe not doing the things that we should. But you know, this is progress. This looks like progress, but you're still below the line, right? So you're going, okay, what might that really look like? If we were trying to design a regenerative business and we were going for that third horizon above the line, what are those ambitious futures that we need to imagine and display? So therefore you go, that is the regenerative model. That is our future. Who do we need to work with? Who do we partner with? How are we trying to get all these people in the room? How do we make these decisions? And so on. So this model really starts to ask two questions. The first question is this. If you get sustainable down there and you get regenerative up there, does becoming sustainable first 
help us as a business become regenerative? Okay, does doing one actually do we go here first and then go beyond sustainability towards regenerative? Or in some cases, will it stop us becoming regenerative? So it's all context dependent, always, of course it is. So for business A, by the time you actually get to sustainability, the will and the resources to actually become regenerative is kind of like, oh, well, that's, that's too hard to get to there now. We are now so solidly below the line that it's taken us this long to get there that that becomes a harder journey to make. Whereas for business B, you might say, well, actually, our sustainability plans look pretty good. And so therefore, this becomes a natural way to slingshot up into more of that regenerative thing. So we should do this first. These are the plans that will help us get there more quickly. Second question that the model asks is, what might we do today to get there more quickly? So I have the sustainability. I can see where we're going if we do all of these initiatives. I can understand what a regenerative imagined future might look like for the business. So how do I use backcasting other futures techniques to then bring us back into the present? What is it we might start doing now if we really were heading there, which we could swap in or add on or just tweak some of our current things in order to think, OK, we really are heading for a more regenerative practice. So the last 18 months for me has been what can we do to help start, hold, host, provoke some of these conversations in different places. So um, one of the things we've done, which you might have seen, is the Regenerative Design Field Kit. Um, this was made out of a series of 40 questions. So the 40 questions are a mix of two things. The Design Council's four roles from the Systemic Design Framework and the RSA's um, 10 Cs from their 10 Capabilities for 21st Century Organisations. I really like the four roles from the Systemic Design Framework from the Design Council. So systems thinker, leader and storyteller, designer and maker, and connector and convener. It just gives you a window into, I think, a much more modern interpretation of what design maybe always was and should have been, but definitely is being described as now. The 10 C's framework from the RSA is much broader than just design, of course, can be for all areas of business, but it gives you a behaviour, a capability, a way of acting upon the world. And so curiosity, creativity, courage, care, communication. And very simply, I took the four roles times the 10 capabilities and invited some friends, so Rob Phillips, uh, Lizzie Shupak, Andy Thornton and others, um, to just say, right, okay, so I've made a first draft of 40 questions by taking four times 10. Let's start tweaking them provoking different thoughts around them. What are the right questions if you are holding this role and trying to apply this capability that you might start asking in order to find out how to change organisations to become regenerative rather than not really understanding where to start. So you have the four roles as the four suits in the pack of cards. Um, and it allows you just to have different dimensions on those four different roles. And especially, I think things like Connect and Convener for me are really powerful pieces of design, but are sometimes overlooked. So just having lots of questions that allow you to think about who am I bringing together in these different um, ways allows you to ask better questions. You might not find immediate and better answers, but you're just thinking, who do I need from the people who are working around this issue in a space? How do I do that? what's the kind of like powerful way that I can share some of that inspiration. It actually sort of like led to this thing that we started as well called the Steps Collective, which is a regenerative practice community, um, which we're continuing into a second year now. Um, so there'll be monthly events and various different meetups. You can you can follow the calendar here to see the next Step Collective events. Um, but yeah, connecting and convening is, yeah, uh, is maybe my favourite role from the work that we've done. Um, and then... Within each suit, you have the 10 different capabilities from the 10 Cs and um, that just say, okay, what are the different dimensions on this? It gives you a little bit more contextual um, provocation to say, okay, so what is it we're trying to achieve here and how might we do this well? So we've tested this with the RCA's Design Futures Master's Programme, um, which I've taught in the last couple of years. Um, just getting people to sit like, say find things identify things in the world around you and start using these cards and frameworks to be able to say okay so what is this how does it change who are the people that we need to bring around it what stories do we need to tell about it and so on so it's the 
it's done really well so far in just provoking new thoughts and approaches and models from people. So we're really happy with how that's been going. Doing that work allows you to start putting things on the generative triangulation above that line. You're going, I'm beginning to see the sorts of things that we might want to do now if we really are heading towards um, a regenerative future. So what's next for the, all of this stuff? Obviously, the Regenerative Design Field Kit will be, uh, is still out there. The last of the second edition um, is available from here, and a new third edition will be coming uh, sometime in the spring, I would imagine. The next thing I'm beginning to lean into for various different things is this sense of entrepreneurial was the thing that started businesses. Intrapreneurial energy is where you are trying to improve your own business. But I learned this word from Teresa Shaheen. She's got a great book called Social Entrepreneurship on it as well. Extrapreneurial, beginning to work outside the boundaries of your organisation to be able to go, huh, who else do we need to sort of bring together in order to do this stuff? So I'm going to bury more into this. I've also been interested in sort of like what are the social and economic equivalents of Bill Reed's y-axis there so sort of like yes we can go from conventional practice all the way up to regenerative but what does that mean socially and what does that mean economically so i've been working on a version of that which will allow you to really understand where you are above or below the line not just an environmental perspective but environmentally economically and socially together and just beginning to balance out those different things and really it's sort of like i'm just now moving into a stage where I've started some really interesting conversations with people already. It's like, like, how do we apply this for our business or for our industry or for our community, whatever it happens to be? What does remaking the future by reshaping the present mean for you? So if you're interested in following that conversation, drop me an email, say hello on LinkedIn or whatever. Um, and good luck on your regenerative journey. Thank you.